so you must have heard about chemical bonds a lot so what are chemical bonds hello students my name is dr keshav kumar and i am phd in chemistry i am imparting knowledge to the aspirants of iit je and neet since more than 5 years and in the continuation of that we will now deal with the concept of chemical bonding so you must have heard about chemical bonds a lot so what are chemical bonds we know there are atoms molecules so the mole in the molecules or the larger compounds the atoms or the constituting ions are held by some chemical forces and those chemical forces are known as chemical bonds or we generally basically just call them bond so what is a chemical bond chemical bond are the attractive forces these are just the attractive forces that hold the constituting atoms or ions together in a molecule or a larger compound so to understand the nature of bonding what type of chemical bonds are there how chemical bonds are formed a lot of theories have been developed over the years and we'll now list down the theories which have been developed to understand the nature of chemical bonds so the theories that have been used over the years are the first theory it was cosel lewis theory the one of the basic theories that was developed it was cosel lewis theory after that the advancement came and a new theory was given which was vs epr theory the next theory was vs epr theory valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and then further one more theory it was vbt and then the mot final the last theory which is the most advanced theory in order to understand the concept of the chemical bonds is mot molecular orbital theory so we'll now be dealing with these theory one by one and in today's lecture we are going to cover the cosel lewis theory we'll be dealing with only cosel lewis theory today and so we'll now continue with the cosel lewis theory so now what do we have we have the cosel lewis theory what does this theory tells us is that this is one of the see this is one of the basic theories that showed some confidence to the researchers that how do chemical bonds work this theory was given in 1916 this theory was given in 1916 what do they project they projected that an atom is composed of kernels and the valence electrons cosel and lewis postulated that an atom which is formed of kernels and valence electrons we will first get to know what are kernels kernels are the combination of nucleus plus the core electrons or the inner electrons kernels are the nucleus and the 
फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई टेक द मॉडल ऑफ एन एटम इफ दिस इज यूर न्यूक्लियस यू हैव फर्स्ट शेल देन यू हैव सेकेंड शेल आल से आई गो फॉर लिथियम आई हैव इफ आई हैव लिथियम देर विल बी वन इलेक्ट्रॉन टू इलेक्ट्रॉन and then i'll have third electron in the second shell so this is your lithium so this nucleus and these two valence electrons this combination nucleus and the inner electrons is termed to be as the kernel so we'll now come here what cosell and lewis projected they projected that in an atom which is composed of kernels and valence electrons in this the valence electrons accumulate themselves in the form of a cube they are present at the corners of the cube i'll draw a random cube here so i'm drawing a sphere inside which is let's suggest that it is representing your kernel and the valence electrons will now be available at the eight corners of the cube and this was suggested by the cosell and lewis they suggested that the valence electrons are present such as the corners of the cube and at the center we have the kernel and we have known that what is a kernel kernel is the combination of nucleus and the core electrons so moving on further so as they suggested that the electrons are uh, the valence electrons are present at the eight corners of the cube so they demonstrated that an atom must have eight valence electrons in order to attain stability and this was due to the noble gas configuration and why they said so because of the noble gas configuration the noble gases we have helium neon argon the group 18 gases they all exist in the form of monoatomic gases because they all have eight valence electrons and so they are stable in themselves and they retard or believe lesser in forming a chemical bond with another atom or an ion so this noble gas configuration led to the rule of eight and this rule of eight electrons the presence of eight electrons in the valence shell has been termed as the octet rule so they named this rule as the octet rule so what is octet rule now octet rule is that each and every atom or ion tends to have eight valence electrons in order to attain stability so whenever an atom or ion will have eight electrons in their valence shell it is said to have completed its octet for example if we take your sodium so what is the electronic configuration of sodium we have it is neon Three s one, so it has one more electron than the stable electronic configuration of neon, which has eight valence electrons. As soon as it loses a electron, it will become sodium positive, and the electronic configuration will become this neon, and no more electron is present because the electron present in this three s. Uh, shell sub shell it was removed and it it attained the configuration of your neon noble gas 
therefore now it has completed its octet and now therefore sodium tends to form compound in its plus 1 oxidation state because it attains the noble gas configuration or it is said to have completed its octet some of the exception is that which so the atoms which do not have eight electrons for example helium what is the electronic configuration of helium helium is 1s 2 so rather than octet it is said to have completed its duplet similar with lithium the electronic configuration for lithium is helium 2s1 as soon as it loses a electron it will become lithium positive plus electron and it will attain the electronic configuration of helium so we have that this when uh, the electrons are very less so they complete their duplet and otherwise every atom or ion wants to have completed its octet to attain the stability and this is very basic rule known as octet rule moving further with this coser lewis theory we have lewis symbols so what do we have now we will learn about the lewis symbols lewis symbols are nothing but just the representation of an atom with the number of their valence electrons for example if i have hydrogen if i have hydrogen the electronic configuration of hydrogen is 1s1 okay so if the electronic configuration is 1s1 then the valence shell is first shell only and first shell contains one electron so the lewis symbol for hydrogen would be h and with a single electron okay we will represent the electrons with a dot and this is now the uh, lewis symbol for your hydrogen atom similarly if we have now uh, your lithium it will also have one valence electron sodium will also have one valence electron so they all be represented like this if i move further if i have calcium it will have two valence electrons if i take uh, your carbon carbon also has your two valence electrons nitrogen it has three valence electrons then oxygen oxygen will have four valence electrons because the electron valence electronic configuration is 2s2 uh, 2p4 so so nitrogen has five sorry oxygen has six carbon has four and then further we have if we go for fluorine it will have seven valence electrons the electronic configuration valence electronic configuration for oxygen was 2s2 2p4 we have to add up the all of the last shell this is also 2s also belongs to valence shell 2p also belongs to valence shell because both are in the second shell so the total number of valence electrons become 6 in case of fluorine it is 2s2 2p5 so it becomes your seven valence electrons so in this way we can depict the lewis symbols so now as we have now seen the lewis symbols the main thing we arrive at is how now bonds are formed so uh, lewis suggested that there are two methods by which the 
uh, your bond formation can occur will take one by one of them the two methods are electron transfer method and the second method is electron sharing method so we'll first take the electron transfer method and the type of bond formed from the electron transfer method is termed as ionic bond or your electrostatic bond this Cossel and Lewis named this type of bond as electrostatic bond and the term ionic bond this was coined by Michael Faraday later so currently the term given by Cossel and Lewis was electrostatic bond the similar bond has a different name ionic bond this term was coined by Michael Faraday in later years so moving on to the method we have say we will take the example of NaCl okay we will take the example of NaCl and NaCl in this sodium and chlorine would join together we will start with sodium what was the electronic configuration electronic configuration was neon 3s1 it becomes sodium positive and electron as sodium has lost one electron the electronic configuration becomes same as that of neon okay and in the case of chlorine it will what is the uh, electronic configuration for chlorine it is argon neon 3s2 3p5 so how many valence electrons are there there are 5 and 2 7 valence electrons so if if it needs to complete its octet how many more electrons are needed one more electron to complete the octet so chlorine will gain one electron and it will become cl minus and now it will attain the electronic configuration same as of argon so it will now become chlorine minus which is known as chloride it is sodium ion and it is chloride so now this as both sodium ion and your chloride have attained the noble gas configuration or have completed their octet they will now form a bond and it will become NaCl so the electron now these compounds so these ions have charges on them so they will feel feel electrostatic attractions as we have already known since the basic classes that opposite charges attract each other so sodium has a positive charge chlorine has a negative charge they will definitely attract each other and this attractive force this electrostatic interaction will be known as electrostatic bond or ionic bond so this is the case of your NaCl. We will take one more example. We will take the example of CaF2. Calcium fluoride. Okay. So, for calcium first, again, we have to use the same procedure always. But is the electronic configuration of calcium? It is your argon. 4s2 so it has two valence electrons in order to achieve the electronic configuration of argon it has simply to lose two electrons only so it will lose two electrons and as soon as it will lose two electrons it will gain a two positive charge okay and if it has gained two positive charge to lost two electrons it will get the same electronic configuration as argon because it has lost two electrons so moving on for fluorine 
very basic concept it is and for fluorine it is helium and 2s2 2p5 again seven valence electrons 2p2 2p5 so what it will do it will have to gain one electron and it will give you f minus and it will become it will gain the electronic configuration of neon which is also a noble, noble gas and as now both of the ions calcium 2 positive ion fluorine minus ion fluoride ion both have gained the noble gas configuration so they will join themselves together how they will join themselves together we will have a calcium 2 positive and two of the fluoride ions because one calcium is losing two electrons and each fluorine will gain one of the electrons so it will require two fluorine to gain the two electrons and then it will become calcium fluoride okay so it was as simple as that we have done two examples for the case of electron transfer for the formation of ionic bond or better known as electrostatic bond so this was the case for electron transfer which we have done with two examples now we'll move on to the electron sharing method so now what we have electron sharing and what electron sharing will give us electron sharing will lead to the formation of a covalent bond okay so what now we'll have we'll have the formation of covalent bond by the method of electron sharing we'll start with a very basic example that is we'll take now say we'll take cl2 dichlorine okay we'll have chlorine gas as an example so first what we have to always do is to find the total number of valence electrons so what are the total number of valence electron is the, in this molecule total number of valence electron in short i'll write it tve for further simplification we'll write total number of valence electrons as tve so what tve becomes here tve becomes we, one of the chlorine has seven valence electrons so two chlorine will have 14 7 plus 7 we will have 14 valence electrons in the case of cl2 so first step was to find the total number of valence electrons so now moving on to second step what we have second step second step is to draw the lewis symbol for each and every atom present in the given molecule so what we have now we have cl2 so we'll draw the lewis symbol for chlorine twice so what is the lewis symbol for chlorine the atomic symbol and then the number of valence electrons depicted on this okay so this is the lewis symbol for one of the chlorine and another chlorine okay so now we have lewis symbols for both of the chlorine so now we have seven valence here seven valence here so how many electrons are needed to complete the octet only one more okay so if only one more electron is needed by each of the chlorine atom to complete their octet they'll share one of the electron of each respective chlorine with each other to complete the octet of both so how will it happen it will happen like this they are having six valence electrons one electron was here so now they have shared one of the electrons with each other and it has become complete octet for both of the chlorine atom see now this chlorine also has eight electron in this in their in its valence shell similarly this chlorine also has eight electron in its valence shell so both of the chlorine 
atoms have completed the, their octet and they have not transferred the electrons to each other. They have just came closer to each other and shared their electrons with each other irrespective of the case like happened in the case of NaCl and calcium fluoride. In that case, sodium given its electron to Cl to make Cl minus and itself becomes Na positive. But here what they have done, they have done that each of the chlorine atom had share, shared their one of the electron with each other. So, and if you can see here, this pair of electron hanging in between is termed as the bond, a covalent bond, a shared pair of electron is known as a covalent bond. So, we'll draw the simple structure now. So, it is the simple compound. So, it is just shown like this Cl, a dashed line and another Cl. So, this is one of the very basic example for a Lewis. This now this structure what is called this complete last structure. This is known as Lewis dot structure this is known as lewis dot structure so we have done the lewis dot structure for cl2 now we'll take some more examples for this uh, lewis dot structures and then we'll move further so, taking another example, say we have now H2O. Okay, we will now take the example for water. So, how does uh, water work? Anna, first, again, I will number the steps. First step is to calculate the TV, total valence electrons so how many total valence electrons would be there one for each hydrogen and six for oxygen so we have eight valence electrons in total tv is tv comes out to be eight so if tv comes out to be eight so we'll now move on to drawing the lewis symbols so the lewis symbols would be like This is the Lewis symbol for oxygen, one hydrogen and the second hydrogen. So hydrogen we know that would like to complete it, its duplet. So for the completing completion of duplet, it requires one more electron. Each hydrogen requires one more electron. Oxygen will want to complete its octet. It has six valence electrons. So two more electrons are required. So what they can do, they can mutually help each other. This formation of covalent bond, the electron sharing concept is just helping themselves. Like if you have 10 rupees, your friend has 10 rupees, but you want to buy a thing for 20 rupees. But And if you and your friend collaborate with each other, you will definitely, you can easily buy that 20 rupees. Thing. Similarly, here the hydrogen wants one electron with its more. This hydrogen wants one, one more electron and this oxygen wants two more electrons. So what they will do? They will share electrons with each other in this manner that the octet of oxygen is filled and the duplet of hydrogen is filled. So hydrogen had one of its electron shared one with oxygen. Hydrogen had one electron, took one from oxygen. And now what has happened? It has happened that this hydrogen has its duplet completed. This hydrogen has its duplet completed. And this oxygen had its octet completed. Okay. So this is how the... Uh, Lewis dot structures work and they explain the formation of a chemical bond that why oxygen forms a single bond with each of the two hydrogens and 
द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ वॉटर इज दिस विद टू लोन पेयर रिसाइडिंग ऑन दी ऑक्सीजन एटम एंड हाउ एंड वाई दिस शेप हैज कम फॉर वॉटर मॉलिक्यूल वाई हैव ड्रॉन लाइक दिस इन बेंट शेप दिस लाइज इन दी नेक्स्ट थियोरी विच विल बी स्टडिंग after the studying the limitations of this theory this is one of the limitation for this theory that it cannot tell you the shape of the molecule i have drawn this shape for your convenience but why this shape this will understand in the upcoming theories that is vscpr theory and vbt theories so this was the lewis dot structure for your water molecule so the examples we have done yet is of cl2 and h2o these molecules deal with only the formation of a single bond so now we'll take examples which will entertain us with the formation of a double bond or a triple bond so for a double bond i'll take the example of co2 okay now i am taking the example of co2 so as simple as that again what is the first step first step is to calculate the tve total valence electrons total valence electrons come out to be 4 for carbon and 6 for each oxygen so 12 so it becomes 16 so we have 16 valence electrons so next step so now we'll draw the lewis dot structure lewis symbols first this is your carbon oxygen and second oxygen so this is the uh, lewis symbols for your carbon and oxygen so now carbon has four electrons oxygen has six electrons so how many electrons needed by oxygen are two for carbon it requires four more electrons to complete its octet so as simple as that we just need a total of eight always and this is not a difficult thing to count we just need only a number eight if we need a number eight this has six it requires two more it requires four more and it can share two electrons with it its octet will be completed it can share two electrons with it its octet will be completed so now this carbon has got two from this oxygen two from this oxygen carbon's octet will also be fulfilled so now we'll draw the lewis dot structure so carbon has four valence electrons it will take two electrons from oxygen oxygen had its six own electrons similarly this oxygen also has completed its octet see this oxygen now has 8 electrons this oxygen now has 8 electrons and this carbon also has 8 electrons so as simple as that each and every atom has completed its octet and but the new thing is here is that they have shared two pairs of electrons with each oxygen atom so the structure will be represented as c double bond o c double bond o so this is your co2 molecule okay so this is how this works we'll quickly take up the example with a triple bond and we'll sum up the lewis dot structures so n2 now i'll go quickly with that tve how many tv two nitrogen atoms each nitrogen atom gives five valence electrons 5 plus 
we have 10 valence electrons so now the lewis symbols lewis symbol is this five valence electrons so we will have this okay so now this nitrogen has five valence electrons this nitrogen has five valence electrons in order to complete the octet it will need three more electrons so they will share three electrons with each other and if they will share three electrons with each other so how many electrons they have shared six total was 10 so 10 minus 6 four electrons are still left and they'll have those four electrons as the lone pair electrons on each of them two on each so now this nitrogen has eight electrons and this nitrogen has eight electrons and in the shared pool this shared pool they have three pair of electrons so the n2 molecule would, would be represented like this therefore the nitrogen nitrogen bond is very stable in nature and it requires a lot of heat to be broken it cannot be broken that much easily so the nitrogen has a triple bond in it nitrogen triple bond nitrogen so we have done a lot of examples for the lewis dot structures and okay we can also find the formal charge on these atoms so we'll take one more example so as to understand about the formal charge also okay formal charge is the charge on each and every atom is the individual charge on each and every atom of a molecule and the sum of that charge will give you the overall total charge we'll take the example of your water only here so first how the formal charge is calculated formal charge the formula is number of valence electron of individual atom the atom that is of concern will first take the number of its valence electron then will subtract the number of lone pair electrons and then we'll subtract the number of and we'll have to take its half half of number of shared electrons okay so we'll apply this formula to your water molecule so the uh, Lewis structure, I'll quickly draw up the Lewis structure for water. It was like this. So this is the Lewis structure for water. This is your hydrogen. This is your hydrogen and this is the octet of oxygen. So first we'll Calculate it for oxygen, the formal charge for oxygen, it would be how many valence electrons are of individual oxygen or oxygen atom, it is 6, oxygen has 6 valence electrons minus number of lone pair electrons, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, the lone pair electrons are those which it is based on only as that atom only, currently it has four electrons so six minus four minus half of your 
shared electrons so how many shared electrons are there four shared electrons so half of four so it becomes six minus four minus two so it comes out to be zero so in water molecule oxygen has no formal charge on it similarly we'll calculate it for the hydrogen so the formal charge on hydrogen would be how many valence electrons are there in hydrogen only one so one minus is there any lone pair electron there is no free unshared electron on hydrogen so this value would be zero minus half of the shared electrons how many shared electrons are there for each hydrogen two shared electrons so we'll have half of two it will become one minus one it, it comes out to be zero so each of the atom in this water molecule has a zero formal charge on it okay so therefore overall this water molecule is neutral in nature okay so this is how a formal charge can be calculated okay so this was the whole of the concept of your lewis theory how lewis theory explains the formation of a chemical bond but this theory has a lot of limitations and lots of drawbacks so we'll list down some of the limitations of these uh, this theory your causal lewis theory so first limitation of this causal lewis theory is the formation of hypervalent compounds so what are hypervalent compounds for example pf5 okay in this pf5 phosphorus is making five bonds with five fluorine atoms so if it is forming five bonds that means five pair of electrons in the valence shell of phosphorus and if there are five pair of electrons in the valence shell of phosphorus it means it will have 10 valence electrons so if it has 10 valence electrons it is having two more electrons than the octet rule so this formation of the this type of compounds is not explained on the basis of causal lewis theory causal lewis theory only explains the compounds which have formed due to the stability of an octet so this type of compounds are not explained on the basis of your causal lewis theory okay. next are your lewis acids for example bf3 In BF3, what is happening is that boron is making three bonds with fluorine and there is no unshared electron on the boron atom. So boron has only six electron in its valence shell due to the formation of three bonds. So three electron pairs, that means six electrons. So there are only six electrons in the valence shell of boron and still this compound is formed and again it is not obeying the octet rule and therefore this is also the limitation of your causal lewis theory that uh, it is not forming the octet and the compound is still uh, available in the or it can be uh, synthetically formed so this is not explained at all on the basis of your this 
कॉसल लुइस थियरी सो द नेक्स्ट लिमिटेशन इज द ऑड इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पीशीज ऑड इलेक्ट्रॉन स्पीशीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल एनो ओके सो एनो इन दिस द टीवी वुड फॉर एनो वुड बी कैलकुलेट द टीवी क्विकली फॉर एनो द टीवी इज नाइट्रोजन हैज योर फाइव वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑक्सीजन हैज सिक्स वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन सो इट विल हैव फाइव प्लस सिक्स टोटल वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन वुड बी इलेवन एंड सो दोएस्ट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस वुड समथिंग लुक लाइक oxygen has eight valence electrons but nitrogen has only seven valence electrons and this still this no gas is formed so <coughs> the formation of these odd electron species is not at all explained by the lewis theory and another last limitation is that formation of नोबल गैस कंपाउंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल जिनॉन फॉर्म्स अ लॉट ऑफ कंपाउंड विद फ्लोरिन एंड ऑक्सीजन सच एज एक्सी एफ टू एक्सी एफ सिक्स एक्सी ओ टू एफ टू एटसेट्रा अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कंपाउंड इज फॉर्म बाय जिनॉन and what actual the uh, lewis theory was based on it is only based on the octet rule what does octet rule state that you should have eight electron in the valence shell and to attain that eight number you have to form that number of chemical bonds but xenon has already eight number of electron in the valence shell so it should not form any bond with any atom and this is the case with rest of the noble gases but xenon forms a lot of compounds with fluorine and oxygen irrespective it has eight elect already eight electrons in the valence shell so why xenon is forming a compound although being a noble gas this is not at all explained on the basis of your lewis theory so these are the limitations of lewis theory so we'll now quickly brief up what we have learned today so we started with the concept of chemical bond what is a chemical bond to understand the chemical bond we listed down four theories that explain that can explain the formation of your chemical bond and in that theory we started with your causal lewis theory okay and in causal lewis theory we have learned lewis symbols and the lewis dot structures and finally we have learned the limitations of this theory the limitations we have just listed these have been one or more explained on the basis of the modern theories which are bscpr bbt mot so we will be studying in them in the later lectures and most of the limitations are easily sorted and the four we have listed and one we were uh, discussing earlier that this theory also does not explain the shape of the molecule so most of these limitations will be uh, elucidated in the next theory in the next lecture we will be upcoming with that would be vbt okay so take stay tuned and we'll have the discussion of vbt or 
first we will be discussing BSEPR. So we will be discussing these two theories in the next lecture. So we will meet again. Thank you.